Okay, well, praise the Lord. It's good to have you all here today. For those of you who are watching my television, this is Ghosting Church. We're located just for myself to Bristol, Minnesota, and Highway 59, and half mile on East and County Road 206. And uh, we'll be talking today about the church. What is the church? And uh, this is a good song to start out with this morning. It's a glorious church without spot or rainbow. Good, happy song. Amen. You were up there. That's okay. Uh, okay. Do you feel a kind of Lady told me, she said, I, I've got 
discs in my back that keep going up and it's terribly painful. And uh, and we talked and then she said, would you pray for me? And I said, I sure will. And then not only that, I said, we've got some praying people in our church. We believe in the power of God's healing. And she said, oh, well, so do I. But she said, my church, all they know, they preach the word, but all they know about is eating. <laughs> and, and, uh, but she said, we just, they just don't get together with us and pray. They just don't seem to understand the power of prayer. We prayed together, and it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And, uh, and then she told me, she said, my sister-in-law, this lady, her name is Sharon, and, and good name. And, uh, and her sister-in-law's name is Sharon, too. And she said, she's on hospice now with cancer. But she said, she is walking with God. And she said, but my work's not done yet. I can't die yet because I still got family I need to reach. And I uh, said, well, we're going to pray for her. And um, I've known all these people since, since we were kids. Grew up together. Yeah. Too. Crafting. Crafting. Struggling. Mm -hmm. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning, Lord, that we can call on you and you have the power to do all things. Lord, we know the battles are many for your people, but we're getting close to reunion day. And we know Satan is fighting with everything he's got trying to discourage your people. But Lord, we stand together for the word says where two or three agree is touching anything that will be done. And Lord, as a body today, we agree together that you will touch these who are hurting today. These who are struggling, we pray for Bob that you would lift him up. Lord, you know all the struggles he's going through. God, lift him up in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for uh, that you would just be with uh, Sharon and uh, the lady that called me. God, you know those vertebrae that pop out of place in the terrible pain. Father, in Jesus' name, put those things back together and Lord, fix her spine that they're going to be anchored well and won't pop out of place. Strengthen the muscles and release the nerves that get pinched. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. You would bring all healing also to her sister and wash her. God, as cancer is going through her body. Thank you, Lord, that she has a living relationship with you. Father, we pray you lift her up right now. Encourage her, Lord, that she can be strong enough. Lord, and heal that she can reach those that she's still hurting for. And Lord, put the joy of the Lord in her heart if she's believing you. And Lord, we just lift her up in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray for Trafton that you would touch him. Lord, you know the struggles he's going through as well. Father, we also pray for those needs that are very personal. Lord, you know each and every one. You know, Lord, the ache and heart of, of those whose loved ones are not walking with you or going through struggles. Father, we just pray that you would lift the heavy burden by bringing a miracle into these lives. Thank you, Lord. Those watching by television that have such dire needs, they don't know what way to turn. We lift them up, Lord, and we ask that you just reveal yourself to them, even now, today. 
and give them faith to believe in Jesus' name. Bless our service today. And God, we pray for also for, Lord, the people over there in the Middle East. And Lord, there's so many Christians that are in harm's way right now. God, protect them. And Lord, God, protect Israel. Father, may there be a move of the Spirit of God from their lives, that many shall turn to Jesus. Lord, we pray for your mercy upon our state that's taken such a terrible, terrible stand on abortion and all that goes with it. God, bring mercy. And Lord, bring, bring a miracle of turning to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad we've got a God big enough? Oh, praise the Lord. Scripture this morning is found in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Beginning in verse 11, it says, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Praise God. And that goes along with the message this morning too. Praising the Lord isn't always so easy. As you wake up in the morning, find out that's what we're 20 below zero. We're praising the Lord, it's not 40 below. Yeah, very. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the windstorm. Well, it's the same Minnesota as 20 below, that's when you put your coat on. From the rising of the sun, we're going down on the sea. Is to encourage you 
and tell you, I can see God is working in your life. And I can. And I thank God for that. Because if we feel that there's nothing happening in us, so we're not changing, we tend to get discouraged and just give up. God is working. From glory to glory He's changing me Changing me He's changing me His likeness and image Still perfecting me But now I'm not shown to the world For He's changing He's changing me
But tell the greatest thing of all is that we could be like Jesus. Be like Him. Oh, to be like Him. Oh, to be like
I picked up my notepad and all this is what happened. I hope I can remember it. So we all pray. The world have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Those pages so thin, please show me, Lord, what I got should be. The word is a lamp to my path. You lead me instead of the good.
heal us. Father, we ask that you would speak to us. And Lord, that you would show us what the church should be. So Lord, give us wisdom and understanding your word. That we want to be a part of what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to take you this morning into the book of Acts, chapter 6. And uh, beginning with the first verse, it says, And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring among the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily administration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Philip and um, Prochorus and Nicanor and, and Timon and uh, Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. What is the church? When we're studying the book of the uh, of Revelation, I'm not talking about the churches. Twice in the first four churches, uh, Though Jesus writing this letter to the churches, he says to two of the churches that uh, he's giving them a compliment. And he says one thing that you're doing right, and he listed the whole things that they were doing right, but he says you hate the Nicolaitans. You hate the Nicolaitans even as I hate them. Now that sounds pretty strong. The Nicolaitans, the word Nicolaitan means victory over laity. Victory over laity. We talked about this the other day. And the victory over laity is this, and I want to tell you a story. I was sharing this with, with Pat and, and Lori. We were in a church years ago. And we came in, into to the church, it was just little sign, our kids, and we got there in beautiful church. We were anxious to go in because it was just a real comfortable looking church. And uh, as we got out of our vehicle and started opening up the, uh, the, the, the our outfit to get bring the stuff in, a fellow from the came and, and he was going to help us, and he was kind of in charge of the church there for, as a layman. And he told me, he says, we don't have a pastor right now. And, uh, and he was kind of hemming and hawing a little bit, and he said, we'll probably only have uh, half a church full of people. And, uh, well, okay, we just kept carrying things in, and he started talking again. And he said, we had a pastor a number of years ago that came here, and he kind of shook our church up for a bit. Because he said, you know, my wife is an excellent pianist, and she can really play the piano. But he said, you have a pianist in your church, and it's her job to play the piano. My wife is not going to play the piano unless it's to fill in if the pianist can't be there. And well, that pleased him. Uh, these people, and then he says, "Now, 
He said, another thing that's going to have to change here, he says, you've got elders in your church. Well, we don't have elders. We, we just have, uh, we have uh, our board and we have the, the uh, deacons. Uh, what do you call it? The deacons. And, yeah, we've got deacons. But he said, you elders, when there's people that get sick in the church, it's not my job to go and pray for them. It's your job. If any is sick among you, let him call for who? The elders of the church. So he said, that's your job, it's not mine. Well, now people are getting all nervous. He said, it's your job, you elders. So you are to go around and you are to pray for the sick. And, and he said, now there's also deacons in this church and the deacons are the ears and the eyes of the congregation. You know all the people, I don't. You are the ears and the eyes of the community. Your job is to wait upon the needs of the congregation. The physical things. You hear when there is a need, you get together and you, and you figure out how can the church meet these needs. And he said, another thing I don't want to do is that I don't want anything to do with the finances of the church. That's, your, that's the elder's job. He said, I'm not even going to look in the books. That's your job. You elders are older men. You are men who are older in Christ as well. You have run businesses. You are the people that have been around a while. And so you understand finances. It's your job. Not mine. Well, now it kind of sounded like as he went from one job to another that he was getting out of a lot of work. Because there's people that are saying, but we pay you to do that. And he says, no, you don't. It's not my job. My job is to be in the Word of God in prayer and seeking the face of God that I can lead the congregation spiritually. And he said the visiting is, is the job of your deacons and your elders. Boy, that goes over like a lead balloon. How many pastors have been kicked out of their church because they don't visit enough? Now, the cases where there are spiritual needs, that's where the pastor goes. The pastor doesn't, you know, I, I, I've heard of this, you know, the, the, the church says, now, pastor, uh, here's a list of all the members, and you need to visit each member so, so many times a year. Basically, all they do is go and drink coffee. But they're going to visit because people just want to visit from the pastor, but there is not a spiritual need that needs to be met. As a result, the pastor is hearing this person, that person complaining about this and that because they're just sitting there. They're spectators. And because they're spectators, they think they know everything about the game. God did not make a congregation be spectators, but participators. But I'll tell you, this is something that is not happening in churches today. It's spectators. And when that happens, the pastor is visiting this one, this one, this one, and all he gets done is putting out fires. And then he gets up to the pulpit and he's dry as a bone because he has not been with God. Doesn't this sound interesting? The pastor needs to be on his knees before God if he's going to have his oil lamp full. In, in Revelation, the pastor is, according to what Jesus said, the pastor is the lamp that brings the light to the congregation. And what happens if a pastor doesn't have time to fill the lamp with oil? 
When you see when the pastor spends <coughs> enough time in the Word and in prayer, you don't have near as much counseling you have to do. That people are getting fed or seeing light through the Word. That's the job of the pastor. But let's go back to the story. <coughs> Well, the people finally got in, got going on. Pretty soon, the elders come back to church and they're all excited. And the elders said, oh, we had a quite a time. We got called uh, because Sister So-and-so was sick. Um, she was really sick. We got together, like you said, Pastor. We went out there. We anointed her with oil. We prayed in the name of Jesus. We didn't know how to do it even, but we, we stumbled through a prayer. We prayed for her. And do you know what happened? She got healed. Now, they were excited. Hey, when the elders of the church are excited, it spreads. The next thing that happens is here, the deacons come and say, Pastor, Pastor, we, we, we went out and started visiting with people. And you know what? They are asking questions. They want to know about Jesus. And then all of a sudden here you see someone in church. And there's a couple sitting there. And there's a, more people sitting next to them. Nobody knows them. Who are they? But the couple from the church are sitting with big smiles on them. They've been up talking Jesus. And they invited them to come to church. And you look at this fellow sitting there. And we, we had this happen. When our pastor in South Dakota, this fellow invited another guy to come. And here he's sitting. And this fellow from the church, he's whispering to this guy all the time. And uh, I thought, what are you doing? The new guy came in. He had no idea what was going to happen. He was scared to death that, that he was going to stand up and everybody sat down and he was going to sit down and everybody else stood up. He didn't know what was going to happen. And so the guy from the church, he's whispering, now this is what's going to happen next. The fellow was at ease. He listened to the message and he surrendered his heart to Jesus. Well, what happens? When you start bringing somebody in and they receive Christ, what does it do to you? It gets you excited. You are not a spectator. You're a participator in what God is doing. This is the body of Christ. And this man said when, when our church started being a church and everybody started finding a place to work in the church and being a part of the hand of God working, he said the whole church got excited and our church grew and grew and grew until it filled right up. He said our whole church was plump full of people and God was working. And then he said the pastor finally like happened so many times been there some time and then the pastor got a call to another church and he said when he said when the pastor left our church he said do you know what happened the church kept right on going and everything was slowed down because the ministry didn't leave the church was the ministry everybody was ministering one to another isn't that exciting Oh, and you can touch people's hearts. And the reason you touch them is because God's love is burning in your heart. You just want to be a part of it. And it's not that we have to preach. It's not that everybody has to teach. Sometimes it's simply caring. And maybe, maybe you don't feel any great gift in your heart that God has given you. But sometimes it's simply taking somebody's hand and saying, God, I pray with you. And God knows you just want a brother or a sister. And the church comes closer and closer together. This is the church of Jesus Christ. The man said, we just kept going and finally said we called another pastor. And this one had just high recommendations and he came and this fellow got up, and my, he just looked like a preacher. Maybe he had hair on his head, I don't know. 
But he got up there and he, first of all, he said, oh, and, and he says to the church pianist, he said, my wife is an excellent pianist, so we won't need you anymore. He dismissed her. His wife sat down there at that keyboard and all she could play. They had a worship team. And the pastor said, you know, my wife and I, we've worked together for years. So we just flow together. So uh, you can just go and sit down. We'll take care of you. He told the elders, he said, uh, you are not trained for visiting and praying with people I am. So from now on, I'll pray for all the sick. The deacons... All you gotta do is be at the board meetings. <coughs> but I'll do all the visiting. In all the laity of the church, he won victory over them. And the church lost their ministry. And he said, the next thing we knew, we said, we lost a couple from over here. A couple from over here because they want to be a part of ministry and they had been taken away and they didn't want to be spectators. And he said, Our church, by the time we lost half our congregation, the pastor decided his ministry was done and he wanted to go someplace else. And he said and that now he is choked up and he said, he said, brother, he says, our church now is on life support. And we don't have anyone that can even plug in the machine. We're dying. I'll tell you, we got up in front of those people and tried to bring life back into the congregation. What is God's church supposed to be? The Bible talks about it's a church, a body that is fitly joined together. Fitly joined together. What happens? You know, when a member of your body doesn't work anymore, you know, as we get older, we find that things aren't working the way they should, the way they used to. And, you know, I've got a shoulder that doesn't work right anymore, and, and it makes it hard. I could play guitar for a little while, and I have to quit. My shoulder isn't working the way it used to be. And that affects everything else. But what happens? We hear about people that have joints, like this lady who called me yesterday, and she said, I have vertebrae that pops out of place. When you've got a, something in a shoulder or something pops out of place, it creates pain, doesn't it? It creates great pain. And what happens when, when there, that creates pain in your body? All of a sudden, the mind can't think about the things you want to do. Your mind goes right to the heart of the pain. And so now, you you don't feel spiritual. When my dad was in the hospital, he had gallbladder problems, he had, had gallbladder surgery, he was in a lot of pain. And dad told me, he says, you know, I thought that if I was in the hospital and something bad ready for you all, he said, I, I always thought I'd be laying there and I'd be praying and I'd be seeking God, but he said, you know, all I could think about was the pain I was going through. I couldn't think about God even. You know, when a church, a church has to be fitly joined together, connected. Connected to Jesus Christ. And when we are connected to Jesus Christ, every member of your body is obeying what the mind says. Your brain tells you what to do, doesn't it? If you need to pick something up off the floor, your brain 
tells your arm to reach out. And it tells your fingers to move. But you can't move. You can't, still can't pick it up because it's too far down. So your brain tells your knees to bend. And so you bow down. Everything is working together. And then your fingers can pick up what you have to pick up. And then everything works together to stand back up. It's all connected to the head. A church fitly joined together. You know, some of us are fingers, some are hands, some are toes. But Jesus is the head. <coughs> Jesus is the head. And we are fitly joined together. That means no member of the body is out of joint. What is Satan trying to do? He's trying to create a disjointed church. And when that happens, there's always pain. There's always pain. When there's pain, the rest of the members are drawn to the pain and not to the work we are asked to do. So what kind of a church do we want to be? Do we want to be a church that is a bunch of spectators? A spectator church is a church that gets out of joint really easy. And like this lady said, she said to know in their, their, no, their in their knees, and, and she said, my, my, she no longer has the strong muscles in her spine that holds the vertebrae there. They're not there anymore. Things. And you see, if we are not connected to Jesus Christ, and if our desire is not to fulfill what He wants, but instead it wants to do what we want. It's like removing the muscle and we pop out of place. We pop out of place and creates all the pain. And all of a sudden everything starts falling apart. The church no longer is able to fulfill the will of God. So what happens when people say, well, the pastor is paid to do everything? The church falls apart. It may act as, it may function, go through all the motions. There is no joy in that church. I, I'm living right now with a lot of frustration, not with this church. My frustration is I'm getting old. And I've got a lot of things I still need to do. And I can't do it without help. I was talking with Nathan this morning again about this. And I said, you know, my brain is like it's still telling me I'm still young and I can do all these things. And my body says, no, you can't. I know time is going by. But my brain is still saying, but all these things need to be accomplished. So what do I have to do? I have to hand down. I use the I have to use the knowledge and the wisdom God has given me over all these years. And I have to channel that into those who still have a young one. And let this one do this. Let this one do that. Let this one do this. That's my desire for you. To help you to see what God is able to do in you. The talents that God has given to you. They may not stand up like a neon sign. But as you open up your heart and say, Lord, how can I be a part 
of a working, functioning body. He will show you little things, this here, this there, and, and all of a sudden we're all just working together, and as we're working together, we're getting things done, and it's exciting. Yesterday, I had my newsletter to get out, and Susan's mom and dad came over. Oh, what a blessing. Your mom even brought dinner. And it was good. Still is good. She put a bunch in my fridge. And you know, there we sat, just the three of us around the table, and we worked on that news. It went together so fast. And we did a whole lot of talking, just fellowship. It was precious. But think of the time they invested that freed me up for spending time for today in seeking the Lord to minister to you. And I look at all the other things that God has put in my heart and I'm saying, God, how can I bring others into being participants that they can enjoy what you're doing? Because you're doing it through them. Oh. You know, Ken, you used to play hockey. Can you imagine going out, out there on the ice, you know? Uh, by the time you get to the one end of the rink, everybody else at the other. Right. <laughs> but there's still that inside of you that remembers the excitement of being on the ice, isn't that right? We're all part of a team. We are part of a team. <coughs> And you know what team stands for? No. Together, everyone accomplishes more. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Aren't you glad you're part of the church? Oh, it's something to be excited about. Because working together as the church, we each have the things that we do from Aren't you glad we have a clean church? You're the coach and the quarterback. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Coach doesn't have to run so fast. Right. But I'm so glad we've got a clean church. I'm so glad we've got Susan. I'm so glad that we've got well, Suzanne up here playing with us now. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. I'm glad for boy runs the camera. For each one for two to teach us about Wednesday Bible study. I'm glad for Ken he goes out and talks to people about Jesus. Even though he tells them that his pastor is a fanatic for Jesus. I'm glad. I'm glad. What's kind of interesting, mm -hmm. even the Amish, they are the church. Yeah. They are the church. Fitly join together. The, the joints are held together securely to work properly under the command of the head. Oh, we better, you know, when, if we start to squeak and complain, we need the oil of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that we can be a body fitly joined together. We each have a purpose that, Lord, when, when we know you as our Savior, then we are joined to the body. And, Lord, we pray you would help us to be a body fitly moving together under the direction of the Holy Spirit with a goal of glorifying God and other people. Thank you, Jesus, for your church. A church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And help us, O oh God, 
even this very day, to make the closing hymn our prayer. That Lord, we know we get a little nervous when you put a call on our life to do something, even to talk to somebody about you, to go and even when somebody's hurting, to stand and hold them and cry with them. We get nervous. Help us to trust you and then to step out and obey. In Jesus' name, amen.
has used you in even a very simple way. Maybe it's even giving somebody a hug. Maybe it's just sit and listen to somebody that is so caring. So thank you, Jesus. I have a privilege of being able to be used. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Father, we thank you this morning for the church triumphant. Fit, jointly fit together. Moving forward under the leadership of the head, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to be a blessing to you and be willing to be used in any way that you would seek us to be used as participants, a part of the body that we join together. Bless us now, Lord, as we go our ways and may we be used for your glory this week. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, upon the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, Serving Jesus.